Father's love, everyone, and welcome. We're going to do a reading of John chapter 9. So sit back and relax. Let's see what we can learn today. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is this not he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He's like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought the Pharisees to him, that aforetime was blind, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed, and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him? that he hath opened thine eyes. He said, He's a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He's of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes? Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshipper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, 
and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see might not see, and that they which see might be made blind. Whoops, I read that one wrong. Let me do that again. For judgment I come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words, and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. All right, as always, let's dig a little deeper and do a little review. We see Jesus is passing by and he sees a man that's born blind from his birth. And his disciples ask him, why is this man blind? Did his parents sin or did he sin that he was born blind? And Jesus answered and he says, not because this man sinned or his parents, but just so that the works of God could be made manifest. I got to work the works of him that sent me while it is day, because the night comes when no man can work, and as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. So we see something interesting here. First of all, they think because the man was born blind, obviously there was some type of sin, or maybe a generational type sin. Was it his parents' fault? Was it his fault? Why? And Jesus said, well, it wasn't nobody's fault, he was just born blind so that the works of God could be made manifest. So, and he also says, he got to work the works of him that sent him while it's day, because there's a night coming when no man can work. But as long as he's in the world, he's the light of the world. Very interesting scriptures here. And ones I highly suggest you take to the spirit and read into a little bit more. But a lot of interesting stuff right there. And what Jesus says. Especially about working while it's day, the night that's coming, but as long as he's here, he's the light of the world. So, and Jesus also said, he'll never leave us or forsake us. Keep that in mind when you take that to the Spirit. But let's move on. And then he, when he'd finished talking, he spit on the ground, made a little bit of clay put him on the blind man's eyes and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is sent. And he went to the pool of Siloam and he washed and he could see again. Interesting. I mean, we, we know Jesus could have just opened his eyes, but he was trying to teach a lesson here, I believe, or perhaps just trying to test the man's faith. We don't really know. But either way, he told him to go wash off and then he would see. Again, I'll get deeper down in here, but for now, very interesting. Take it to the Spirit. See what it might reveal to you about that. It's very interesting. So after he got his sight back, some of the neighbors seen him that knew he was blind and he sat begging all the time. And some said, this is him. And others said, nah, he looks like him, but it ain't him. And then he said, oh yeah, it's me. I'm the one that was blind and used to beg. So they said to him, Well, how'd you get your sight back? How were your eyes open? And he said, A man called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and told me to go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. And they said unto him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. So they took him to the Pharisees, the guy that was blind. They took him to the Pharisees, and we're, it's noted that it was the Sabbath day that all this was taking place. So once again, Jesus doing things on the Sabbath day, which is highly against their Moses' law and Jewish traditions, Israel, Hebrew traditions, I should say. So then the Pharisees ask him, how'd you get your sight? And he told them, same thing, put clay on my eyes, I washed it off, and now I see. And some of the Pharisees said, well, this man's not of God because he didn't keep the Sabbath. And others said, well, how can I sinner do this so it caused a great division because some were like well he has to be from god or he wouldn't be able to do this and others were like well there's no way he's from god he broke the sabbath so it caused a great division 
And they said to the blind man again, what do you think about this guy? The guy that opened your eyes. What do you think he is? And he said, well, I think he's a prophet. So the Jews thought this is some type of hoax. They didn't believe that he had been born blind and received his sight. So they called his parents and they asked them, is this your son who you say is born blind? How then does he see? So his parents said, well, we know it's our son. We know he's born blind, but we don't know how he sees. We don't know anything of it. Ask him, he's of age. Let him speak for himself. Because they were afraid of the Pharisees. So they were like, oh, we don't know. Ask him, he's old enough. He's of age. Let him speak for himself. We don't want no parts of this. So they called the guy back. And they said, Give God the praise. We know that this man's a sinner. So he answers him and he says, well, whether this guy's a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him again, well, what did he do? How do you open your eyes? He said, I told you already and you didn't hear. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to be his disciples? <laughs> not a good thing to say to the Pharisees. So they reviled him and said, you're his disciple, but we're Moses' disciples. We know God spoke to Moses. As for this guy, we don't know from where he comes from or from who's talking to him, basically. So the man said, well, that's a marvelous thing, isn't it? That you don't know where he comes from or who's talking to him. Yet he opened my eyes. And we also know that God don't hear sinners. But if as a worshiper of God and does his will, that's the one God will listen to. So, have you ever heard before of anyone that opened the eyes of someone that was born blind? So basically, basically he's telling them, well, it's pretty amazing then. You're saying this guy's a sinner, yet he opened my eyes. And we know that God don't hear sinners. But if a man's a worshiper of God and does his will, that's who he hears. So, how did he open my eyes? If he's a sinner, basically he's saying. And have you ever heard before that anyone that was born blind had their eyes open? He says, if this man wasn't of God, he couldn't do anything. And then they, of course, not knowing what else to say, resort to their usual pharisaical things and say, well, you're a sinner. You was born in sins. You, you, you're not even close to us. You're just a sinner. So... How are you going to teach us? How are you going to tell us anything? Get out. So they threw him out. Now let's think about this. Before we go any further. So we got Jesus performing a miracle on the Sabbath. And he just so happens to take someone who's been blind. Since birth. Okay. A lot of symbology going on here. Like I said. Take this to the spirit. This is such. So awesome and so deep. But I don't want to spoil it all for you. Only the Spirit can show it to you. But it's, it's amazing. So he takes someone who's been blind since birth. Gives them back their sight. By telling them to go wash off in a pool. Called scent. The guy goes to the Pharisees. They basically say... Jesus has to be a sinner because he healed him on a Sabbath day. He basically counters with, how could he be a sinner? Why would God answer him? Because God don't hear sinners. In other words, he's using their own laws and book against them. You know what I mean? He says, you got to be a worshiper of God and do his will for him to hear you. So they get mad, throw him out. It's all very interesting that Jesus performed this miracle right before he went and talked to the Pharisees about what he's about to talk to. So keep that all in mind. Let's go on down. So Jesus, he hears they threw him out and he goes and finds him and says, Do you believe on the Son of God? And the guy says, Well, who is he that I could believe on him? Who is the Son of God? I'll believe on him. Jesus said, 
you've seen him and you're talking to him. And he says, oh man, I believe. And he bowed down before him. He worshipped him, which means to go prostrate, to bow down, basically. He said, oh, I believe. I definitely believe. You know, you, you cured my blindness. You... I definitely believe you're the son of God. If you're telling me you're the son of God, I believe you're the son of God. So then, Jesus says something very interesting. Now, obviously, there's Pharisees here because they're going to talk in a second. So Jesus is in front of these, some Pharisees, and he says, For judgment I'm coming into this world that those who see not might see. And those that see might be made blind. Man, that's so, so deep considering what all is going on. He's saying he's come into the world so that those who are blind, see, he healed a physical blindness that had been there since the beginning of that man's life. And now he's taken it to a spiritual level. He's, he's showing how it's paralleling what he's come to do on a spiritual level. It's amazing. He said, that's why I come. For the blind, for those who can't see, so that they could see on a spiritual level the truth. He's bringing the truth to those that are willing to see it. They couldn't see it before. We've all been born blind since birth no one has seen the truth we've all been indoctrinated into all these fake false jesuses and religions we've all been blind since birth spiritually and he's come so that we can see but then he says those which see might be made blind bam he's talking about the pharisees and all these other religious leaders nowadays and people on YouTube and all these other people that think they already know. They think they see. They think they got it. They got it all figured out. They see. So they can't hear Jesus. So they're actually blind. Because they think they've been seeing their whole life. They don't realize they've been blind. They realize they, well, it, that comes up very, at the very end. He says, so some of the Pharisees which were with him heard him talking this. And said to him, oh, so are we blind? You saying we're blind too? Well, that's exactly what he's saying on a spiritual level. So he says to him, well, if he is blind, you wouldn't have any sin. But since you think you see, since you say we see, since you think you already see, well, your sin's going to remain. Man, brothers and sisters, that's why I love John. This <laughs> is so much truth, so powerful, hidden in all these things that Jesus is saying. Take this all to the Spirit. I beg you, this is awesome. Let the Spirit reveal all this to you. He's basically telling them, if you, if you realized you was blind, you wouldn't have any sin. You'd be good. But you think you already see. You think you already know. You think you already got it all figured out. You think you know who my Father is. But you're blind. But you don't think you're blind. You think you see. So your sins are going to remain. Because basically you're not going to believe on me. You're not going to believe what I come to tell you. You're not going to believe anything I'm saying. You, you ain't got a chance. Because you already think you see. Oh brothers and sisters. We got to remember we've been born blind since birth. I don't care what kind of Christian household you think you grew up in. Or what kind of religion you've been following your whole life until you get that personal relationship with Jesus the light of the world until you get him with you well you're just walking in darkness you're blind you just don't know it it's time to admit we're blind brothers and sisters and we're born that way there's only one truth there's only one light there's only one way to the Father, and that's Jesus Christ. He's the only one can help you see through the power of the Holy Spirit, which he sends to us.
and gives us. That's the only way we can see. You can stumble around blind like most of you are, unfortunately, following all the blind leaders right into that ditch. Stop following the blind leaders. Admit you're blind. Cry out to the Father to open your eyes and to help you see the truth that is Jesus Christ. Don't forget to pray for our children and our brothers and sisters all around the world. And most of all, pray for those who are blind, stumbling around in this darkness, so that they too can someday see. As always, may the Father bless you, keep you, May the Father be gracious unto you and give you peace. I'll see you next time.